All right, Bulls fans. We got something a little different for you guys tonight. Uh, this time, it's not War Machine. It's not 40K. It's not even Fantasy. We're doing some Malifaux. Uh, I've set up my Resurrectionist, led by McMorning. I am bringing them up against Aaron's Guild, led by Lady Justice. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Malifaux is a pretty small game. It's a skirmish. Uh, the first thing that you do is you flip for deployment. We got, what is it called? Standard. Sorry, say it again? Standard. Standard deployment. All right, that means it's like most war games you play. We're each on a different side of the table. Six inches in, the board's only three feet in Malifaux. So if things are a little small, that's why. These walls back here actually are the edge of the board. They're not terrain pieces. And then the next step was to flip for the strategies and we got turf war. Turf war, right. So that means we're gonna move our gangs and it's just gonna be a big mosh pit right in the middle centered around this little clear bead we have to mark off the center of the table. Now after that, that's the big one. That's the goal that both of us are trying to achieve. Now we also get a secondary goals that can be secret. Those are called the scheme. So you flip for those uh, at the start. We got them written down over there on that little piece of paper. Yes. Uh, so you flip for those and then you choose them. Now you can declare or you can keep them secret. Erin uh, has chose to declare hers. So she is doing murder protege, which means she is trying to kill my most expensive model, which is uh, Mr. Sebastian over here. So I'm going to try to keep him alive. I don't have very high hopes about that. He's pretty squishy. Uh, and you have also declared, what was your second scheme? Uh, line in the sand. Line in the sand. So line in the sand means that Aaron is going to get all her dudes uh, across the middle of the table and then they can spend one action point to drop these little scheme markers, which uh, Malfo, these guys make these cool little uh, brightly colored bases you can use for that. So those are going to be appearing across the line of the table. I can try to make them go away or I can try to kill her dudes. Uh, it takes a, an action point to put one down and an action point to make one go away. Uh, each model has two action points, so they're precious and you have to decide how you're going to use them carefully. Uh, now in Malifo, the most interesting thing uh, that really distinguishes from other minis games is that you don't use dice, you use cards. So, we've already flipped for deployment and schemes and everything else, and uh, we flipped for first turn. I got first turn with the big 13. Now, uh, this is a game where a lot of stuff gets mixed up even on turn one, so we will be coming back. Uh, once that has been completed to explain what's been going on and probably there will already be some casualties at the very least some interesting things will have happened. So back in a few. Okay, so we're back a little early. I promised uh, we'd come back at the end of the, at the start of next turn, but I thought to myself, hey, all these people watching this, if you guys haven't ever played Malifaux before, you don't know how it works. So the judge over here he is about to attack my flesh construct, so real quick, I thought we could go over how the basic process of attacking, defending, and damaging works. So what's about to happen to me? Okay, so we have, with Judge, he has a special ability. Uh, we've got a ranged attack and a melee attack, but both of them have what are called triggers, so if I get the mask trigger to make this go off, um, then he will get a second attack against the construct. So. We will go ahead and try and make that happen. All right, so what happens now is Aaron is going to flip for attack, yes. and I'm going to flip for defense. Let's, let's move my cards over here, and then this will be a little bit more dramatic. All right, so attack and defense, flip go. Oh, wait. All right. Uh, before I was, okay, I said I can make this happen. So since I know I don't have it in my hand to cheat in, I'm spending a stone. Okay. So this this is good because this brings us to another dynamic real quick of this game. Uh, there's another resource aside from the AP and aside from your hand of cards. So we're flipping right now. So one of the things you can do, if a flip doesn't go your way, you can always cheat from a hand that you have at your disposal at all times. But there's another thing you can do. Certain models have the soul stone manipulation ability. That's usually uh, masters, uh, henchmen, and minions. Some minions. Some minions. So the powerful named characters, the Dramatis Personae of Malifaux, uh, they can do the Soul Stone ability. So uh, as she was saying, it's a triggered ability. It means it requires a certain suit to go off. Uh, so you are going to use a Soul Stone. Okay, so so Soul Stone spent. So you get to start the game with the cash. Every master, so master, that's Lady Justice, she's the master. Every master has their own cash. And then you can 
keep a little army points in reserve and spend those on soul stones. And they let you do cool cheaty stuff like what we just saw, cheating to add the suit. All right, so now, even though this is an ace of, Crow. of crows, it is technically an ace of masks, masks because of the cheat. Now, uh, aces in this game, not good. Uh, they are always that blackjack value of one. They are not 11s, they are always a one. Uh, so right now, uh, shockingly, my flesh construct with his measly defense of three is defending successfully against the judge's attack. Uh, I add his defense of three to that seven that I flipped, that gives him a 10, and what is the judge's stat on the range five. attack? A five. So I am currently beating the judge by four. But. So now, as the person losing this duel, that's what we're doing right now, this is a defense duel, uh, Aaron has the option to cheat. The loser always cheats first. Yes. So, looks like she's gonna cheat, and she does. And what is this you've added? The king. So a king has a value of 13. So now she is kicking my butt pretty darn well. Uh, so I've gone from being three, four ahead to now being down by nine. Um, and this... Eight. By eight? Uh, 13 plus five. So we've got 18 versus your total of 10. Okay, so down by eight. Uh, and that's important because uh, in Malifo you can only cheat your damage flip. So remember we just saw cheating. So now she's hit me. She's hitting me by too much for me to want to bother cheating my defense. I can, if I had a really good card, I could always use it, try to cheat and win, but it's just too low. I'm not gonna bother cheating. So this attack is going through. Now, uh, if you want to be able to cheat your damage, which is important to deal a lot of damage, uh, then you cannot be at what they call a negative flip. Your, your attack has to succeed well enough that you don't achieve, a, that you're not at a negative. Um, and right now with that eight, uh, Aaron is almost there. Unfortunately, uh, my flesh construct, the undead, have a certain survivability built into them. And in the case of most of them, that is the hard to wound ability. Uh, it's kind of like roll two dice and pick the lowest. Um, when she tries to damage my flesh construct, she's always gonna flip two and pick the lowest, unless unless the damage, unless the attack is just astronomically high. And it's not astronomically high right now. Eight above is pretty high, but not astronomically high. So let's see. Uh, normally you would be at a straight flip. Yes, but because of the hard to wound one? But because of the hard to wound. Right, so it's hard to wound one, which yeah. means so that puts a negative on it. So yeah, normally um, between six and, if I was beating your total by between six and 10 it would be a straight flip, but because of the negative from the hard to wound, it's hard gonna to be wound. a negative. All right, so that's gonna be flipped twice, yes. and then she has to pick the lowest result. So before that, the reason I spent the soul stone to get the mask, this would not have worked because it's not a mask trigger, but this will allow me to get the trigger so I will get to make a second attack. Right, so just one more time to clarify, the value of the card is high enough that it achieved the target number, but again, it still needed that mask to work for the suit. So, so sometimes you need just the number, uh, but sometimes you also need the suit, so. All right, flipping for damage. So we've got a moderate, the seven is a moderate. Whoa, sorry. <laughs> I have some problems with the zoom feature. All right. All right, so this would have been a moderate. That was the first card flip, but because I had to flip the second card, that's a weak. Um, All right. So it will so be weak damage. So. Every model has a set number of damage, so if you could please point to the damage in question right, right so now. So it's on the action, so for this, it's two, three, five. So right. the weak is two. Yeah, and uh, depending on the value of the card, uh, all the... Uh, all the values do a different amount. So there's weak, moderate, and severe. And that's what those three numbers are. Um, this is a special fancy uh, Evil Baby Orphanage deck. Um, I am not as familiar with Malifaux as Aaron, so my deck uh, helps me cheat. So as you can see, a 10 is a moderate. Um, and I think, what is it, one through four is, yeah, it's one is through weak. Five, one through five is weak. Six through 10. And, and then 11 or above is, is a severe damage. Yeah. But, so if it's my deck, I'll, I'll just know immediately because it says moderate or weak. Anyway, <laughs> all right, so that was an attack. The last thing I have to do is uh, track damage. So I'm gonna walk over here, find my Flesh Construct card. Uh, lucky for me, this dude has a lot of wounds. All right, so he took two? Yes. Well, only two damage, so he's still in pretty good shape. They don't have armor, right? Sorry? They don't have armor. They don't have armor. No, okay. All right, and that's it for now. All right, so I'm back after end of turn. As promised, there was a little more bloodshed. Uh, this is a different flesh construct. 
his companion has died. That is what that red counter indicates. Uh, that is his corpse. Now, fortunately, since I'm playing the Resurrectionist faction, I can maybe do some cool things with that corpse. Uh, primarily, I can turn it into a dead dog, which might sound a little odd. It would be kind of like one of those guys there. Uh, but yeah, that's the way things work in Malifaux. A corpse counter is good to turn into whatever kind of undead you want. Um, but anyway, what happened? Uh, so the judge, after I turned off the camera, the judge, that trigger that the judge declared was to make another attack against my flesh construct, which wounded it pretty badly. And then Lady Justice, uh, with her big sword, she charged in and she finished him off. Uh, now I'm hoping that uh, that means that she will be exposed because I have my force on its way in. Um, she's got a lot of hit points, but she doesn't dodge so well. So I'm kind of hoping that maybe I can take her out in retaliation. Uh, McMorning already tried. He flung a scalpel at her using one of his upgrades. Uh, that missed, and then he retreated after that um, to be a little safer. So a lot is going to depend on the who goes first flip. So why don't we do that real quick? Wait, we need to shuffle. All right, so we'll shuffle. And All right, so here it is, and so much is writing on this. Uh, it's the who goes first flip. Ready? Yes. And bam. Oh. All right. So I've got a six to the three. Now, you can always soul stone to reflip. A lot of times it's not worth it if your opponent gets just too high. It's just a waste of a soul stone to even bother. But I only got a six. So this would be one of those times when Aaron might want to spend one of those valuable soul stones. Yes. Yeah, let's go ahead and try doing that. All right, soul stone spent. That puts her down to five. Ah, Aha, nine. a nine. So now do I spend? You know what? I'm just gonna risk it. I think I'm gonna keep those soul stones and use them uh, to boost my defense flips, maybe. So I will come back after the turn. All right, we're back in the middle of the turn once again. So if you've played Malifaux before, you know what this means. Uh, Lady Justice over here. She's gonna bring down my other flesh construct real nice, right? So I cheated my defense flip high enough that uh, they were really close. And that meant that Lady Justice had to do a lot of minus flips. As you can see, it was a triple negative flip, which means four flips in total. However, that last card, card number four, was the Red Joker. So whenever you flip the Red Joker, you always get to use it. Normally, like I said, negative flips are like roll this number of dice, draw the lowest. Well, in this case, uh, the Red Joker showed up. It always takes precedence. So what does the Red Joker do, Aaron? What, uh, what exactly are you about to do to my poor flesh construct over here? So normally she has a damage track, three, four, six. Three, four, six, okay, that's not so bad. Red Joker means you take max damage plus min damage. So that so sounds like this Red Joker is gonna deal nine damage to me. Nine damage, plus she had declared a critical strike trigger, so plus one damage. So plus it would one be damage for the ram. So again, that comes back to suits again. Uh, some models have built-in suits, and does she does she have the built-in? So yes, Lady Justice has a built-in ram, so she can always use that ram as a plus one damage. Additionally, the Red Joker is whatever suit you want it to be, right? It, well, but it doesn't matter with damage so much. If okay, we, right, because yeah. it's, it's a hit thing. Yeah. So yeah, so the suit and the Red, Red Joker is any suit you want it to be, but it doesn't matter for the damage flip because the suit requirement is on the attack, and that has already been resolved. So, uh, the Flesh Construct already took a little damage from the first hit, and now that he's going to take 11 more, that is it for him. So my second Flesh Construct is down, and I will come back if anything really awesome happens, or at the end of the turn. Alright, so that was almost a really, really exciting turn. So, uh, right off the bat, after uh, Lady Justice... Lady Justice charged in, and you saw her finish off my other Flesh Construct with that Red Joker. So he resolved that, and then it was mid-warning's turn to retaliate. So he has a really cool, he did that little, cool little uh, thing I told you about from last turn, his upgrade where it lets him do a melee attack from six inches away. Uh, that went off, and then the most awesome possible thing happened, I flipped the Red Joker too. And for a second there, it looked like poor Lady Justice was really screwed. But then the trump card, Badge of Office. So the fine print down there says, for any one damage, basically reduce the damage to one, then discard this upgrade. So she took the scalpel right to the badge, just like in the old detective movies, um, and now the badge is gone. So she can't do it again, but she would have taken eight damage and instead took one. So she is still alive and kicking. Fortunately, I had a few more tricks up my sleeve. 
Um, Sebastian over here has the induction ability. So McMorning, since he did hit, he managed to poison Lady Justice, and he hit her a second time, although for pretty negligible damage, poisoning her again. Now, the induction ability that Sebastian has, normally uh, poison does one damage to you at the beginning of the turn, but with induction on uh, Sebastian, it did an extra three. So she took three damage at the start of this turn. Additionally, both McMorning and Sebastian have the catalyst ability. That means that in addition to the one damage you take at the start of your turn, you're also going to take one damage when you activate, and uh, the induction ability will work off that as well. So when she activates, she's going to take another three damage from poison. So she's, she's kind of getting there. She's still a little more healthy than I would like. Uh, otherwise, other than that, um, a lot of not interesting stuff happens. Uh, my dogs didn't manage to hurt Guildguard that they charged. Uh, Guildguard didn't really manage to hurt dogs that they shot at. Uh, other dogs charged Lady Justice and also didn't really manage to do much damage. So, not the most eventful turn, despite all the cool stuff happening in the middle. Uh, Sebastian made a dog, I didn't have the suit for that, so I had to use his soul stone to give me that suit. Um, and the judge tried to kill Sebastian and failed. Uh, so now it's time for the first turn flip. As you can see, we both have our two biggest, most important heavy hitters right in the middle. So this is going to mean a lot. All right. So what do you think? No. No, no soul stone. All right. So I get to go first this time. I'm going to try to make it count. All right. We're back. And that was an incredibly productive turn for me. Uh, you're looking at the center. Remember who was standing there last turn? Last turn there was Lady Justice and the judge. And now they are gone. McMorning, grinning like an idiot, stands triumphant. Uh, although the battle's not over yet. This is a game about VPs not killing necessarily, so we're still going to have to keep at it. But, so how did all this happen? Well, you see, uh, these nurses, I haven't gone into what they do yet, uh, they can supply to models, friendly or enemy, a supply of very interesting narcotics. Uh, they have a bunch of things they can do, and on this particular turn, uh, this nurse gave McMorning the hallucinogens ability. Uh, hallucinogens means that you get plus two damage to your melee attack, uh, but you can only make melee attacks. So that works great when you're already stuck in. So you can't walk, but what do you care? There's already somebody right there you wanted to kill. So I had her go first. Now, normally Malifaux is an I go, you go activation game. I move a piece, you move a piece, and this goes on. Now, the nurses have the Accomplice special ability. That allows them to activate a model after they've activated. And in this case, I went straight to McMorning. So, juiced up on hallucinogens, he tore into Lady Justice. Uh, and he didn't even need to plus two damage because I just flipped the Red Joker again. Uh, he, as he was still pretty pissed after last turn, she used her badge of justice to get rid of it. So he just, he just did it again. Uh, the odds against that are pretty ludicrous, but I guess to everything happened. Now, because I'm a jerk, I had to add insult to injury. Uh, Sebastian, uh, after one of these guild guard over here killed one of my dogs, Sebastian activated and raised a, do a dead dog from the corpse of Lady Justice, who then charged the now dead judge. Uh, the judge got charged by a lot of dogs, and most of them died. Uh, I think actually a corpse counter is missing. There should be another corpse counter there for a different dead dog, but he got charged by a lot of dogs, took down a lot of dogs, uh, now all the dogs again have poison. Uh, each time a dog attacked him, he got a poison counter added. And so he took three, three damage each from three dogs and had three poison counters on him, plus some damage he'd taken earlier. Uh, McMorning threw a scalpel at him uh, before his activation ended. Uh, so then after that, uh, there he was, still looking okay with four health, and the Chihuahua ran up. Now the Chihuahua shares uh, one magical spell with McMorning. Uh, these little guys, every master has their totem. And what these are, are models that are a lot stronger usually than their points cost suggests, and that's why you only get one. Uh, they, these are little beings, supernatural, or maybe sometimes just a really close friend that uh, the masters have some kind of special connection with. And McMorning, he's got this dead chihuahua. It's supposed to be the first creature he ever raised from the dead. So it has one of McMorning's spells. The spell is called Expunge. And what Expunge does is it just causes all the damage from poison to a model immediately. So if you have five poison counters on you and Expunge is cast, uh, you take five damage. And the little guy Expunge the Judge, who would have still had one damage left on him. However, the Chihuahua was not out of tricks yet. It used the Horrific Odor ability to give the Judge a further plus two poison 
and then he died uh, at the beginning of the turn when those effects were resolved. Um, so I'm in great shape right now. Uh, one of my schemes was murder protege. I did not reveal it, uh, but having now killed the judge, which is Aaron's highest point model, um, I've achieved murder protege for plus two. Um, so I'm at four victory points. I've gotten uh, two victory points for claiming the center. The way that works is if you have two models within six inches, you get a point. So I've gotten, I've done that twice now. This is the second time. Um, Aaron only has one point, but she's working a lot harder on schemes than I am. Oh, sorry. You do, so the second point. So you do have two within six. Yeah. Aaron has two points, and she's working on some other schemes, which is again line in the sorry line in the sand. Yes. Line in the sand, laying down these. Uh, these interact, sorry, these objective markers, um, and if she can get four of them across this line, that'll be three points, right? So she's already got three, um, so she stands to make a good amount of points. However, I'm holding the center line, so even though I killed some pretty important models, uh, she still has a chance here because she's still got some models mo that can move around that aren't engaged that can lay down counters. So we will be back at the end of the turn. Probably going to start winding down now. All right. So not nearly as an exciting turn as last time. Uh, McMorning, flush with success after killing Lady Justice, completely flubbed all of his attacks on the Death Marshal, uh, who's hiding there in the wood beside him. Um, fortunately, he was nimble enough to dodge all the Death Marshal's attacks, so it was just a complete and utter flailing of arms, and so nothing really happened there. Uh, the Chihuahua didn't do anything grand this turn either. He just caused this Death Marshal to gain the Poison Plus Two condition. Uh, unfortunately, I lost one of these dogs that was over here trying to uh, secure uh, this flank, and now it's pretty much owned by these three Guild Guard. Uh, these three have been a big thorn in my side. They're cheap models, but they have a special rule where if they're close enough to each other, what is that, three inches? Yeah. If they're within three inches, they get plus two defense, which brings them from a four to a six, which is pretty good in this game. Uh, over here, because as I, as you may recall, uh, Sebastian is the target of Aaron's murder protege scheme uh, to try to keep him alive a little longer. I've used my nurse to heal his wounds completely. Uh, unfortunately, the downside to that is Sebastian is also paralyzed, a paralyzed model. Uh, basically, it spends its whole turn becoming unparalyzed. So he is completely out of the fight this turn. Um, and yeah, so. We are still tied on strategies. We've each gotten one point for the strategy each turn. I've achieved my murder protege goal, um, but Aaron has three of these along the line. It looks like it's gonna be tough for me to stop her from getting another one over here. Uh, so I could still end up losing this one despite having given handed out a lot of casualties. So I'm going first. Hopefully McMorning can pull it together this time and maybe even kill both these death marshals. Uh, we'll see. Uh, and this is turn five. This game usually only lasts five turns. There's a very slim chance at the end of uh, turn five that you'll flip a card and get to keep going, but I, this probably won't happen. I actually haven't seen it happen yet at all. So prob this will probably be end of game after this turn. So here we are. It's the end of turn five, very likely the last turn. We have not yet flipped to see if another turn will happen. So let's look at the standings right now. All right, so we have both managed to earn the maximum amount of points for the strategy for the turf war. Uh, we have each had two models within six inches of the center every turn, so that's four to both of us. Uh, I succeeded on my murder protege scheme, gave myself an extra two points, that's six. My final scheme was outflank. Uh, at the very end, I ran a dog that I summoned last turn over here to the far edge of the table, scoring me one point for outflank for a total of seven. Uh, so like I said, Aaron also has four for the strategy. Um, she had three over here. This is kind of an interesting one um, and a good tip for all you potential guild players out there. Uh, McMorning uh, murdered a death marshal here in the woods with enough AP left over to take away one of these scheme markers. However, death marshals have the finish the job ability. So as he died, that death marshal left one final scheme marker uh, right there on the line, right where it needed to go, and managed to keep Aaron all the VPs she needed because there's another one over here that one of the guild guard laid down after he finished off my nurse. So, because she declared and has all four like she needs, that is another seven. 
So it looks like this is going to be a very well fought tie game, but uh, we're going to flip to see if there's another turn and an 11. Is that another, that's another turn. All right, so there's going to be one more turn. We're going to grind it out and see what happens. All right, folks, I did it. I blew it. I had it in my grasp. It could have been mine, and I blew it. So what happened? Uh, well, I got greedy. Uh, the first thing I should have done last turn was activate Sebastian. Yes, that's right. Sebastian's not there anymore because he's been killed. He's, he's gone. He's no longer among us. But instead, I got greedy. I activated Big Morning to kill a Death Marshal. And what did Aaron do to retaliate? Well, she activated a different Death Marshal, flipped the Red Joker, and that is why there's a corpse counter standing right there where Sebastian was last turn. So if I'd done it differently, I could have moved Sebastian over here, activated the nurse because of his, Sebastian also has the accomplice ability. So I could do a chain activation on the nurse who could have healed him back up to full. Then it would have been very unlikely she would have been able to kill him. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't. So I lose, uh, that puts Aaron up three victory points. So in the end, the final tally is 10 to seven. Still a very exciting game. And uh, once again, I guess, uh, I was in the lead model for model for a while, but man, I'm kind of outnumbered now. McMorning and one loyal nurse left against a death marshal and three guild guard. So, pay attention, always pay attention to your objectives and to your schemes. It is one of those games, if you don't do that, you will lose. Alright, thanks for watching.